Mark Rosengarten. Welcome to... Ask Rosengarten. Hey guys, good to see you. Well, technically I'm not seeing you, you're seeing me, which is a good thing because some of you are starting to email me to ask me questions so I can continue on with this amazing thing. Today's question comes to us from Lisa Mather. Dear Mr. Rosengarten, I'd really love some help with learning how to draw atoms. I have a test coming up and I'm struggling with this. Please see the attached diagram I made of my question as it explains better than I could in an email. Uh, and basically what we have is this. Here's a diagram of the first few sublevels of an atom. 1s, 2s, 2p, and 3s. Now an s sublevel can only hold up to two electrons in its single orbital. A p sublevel is made up of three orbitals, each of which can hold up to two electrons. Each orbital fills up with electrons, one electron first, then goes in and pops in the second. There's the p sub x orbital, which occupies the x-axis, a p sub y orbital, which occupies the y-axis, and the p sub z orbital, which does a z-axis going into the board here and out of the board there. Since this is only two-dimensional, i got to do the best with what I've got to, to deal with. Now let me show you how you fill in these electrons for the elements going upwards, starting with hydrogen. Hydrogen has an electron configuration of 1s up. It only has one unpaired electron, and that goes in the s orbital. Helium is 1s2, where the electrons have opposite spin. They will be found on opposite sides of that orbital. Because electrons are negative, they're going to try to get away from each other as much as possible. Lithium has a configuration of 1s2, 2s1. So there'll be an electron in the 2s orbital. Beryllium has a configuration of 1s2, 2s2, or 2s up, down. That means we have a pair of electrons occupying the, two less, the 2s orbital. Boron has a configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 1. Now there's the three orbitals, the px, the py, and the pz orbital. So the px fills up with an electron first. Carbon has the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, or x, px up, and py up, because the ups go in first before any downs go in. So p sub y gets an electron. Nitrogen has the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. The third electron goes into the z orbital. Oxygen has a configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So where does that fourth electron go? Back into the px orbital, like that. And again, One's got the upspin, the other's got the downspin. Fluorine has the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Py gets the next electron. Like that. Neon has the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, where the p sublevel is now filled up. Sodium has the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s, 1. So 3s has one electron in it. And magnesium's configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. So we get the second electron in that particular s orbital. Now this is just an approximation. Remember, these electrons are actually moving at near the speed of light, and it's impossible to know exactly where they are and where they're going with any kind of precision. However, we know the basic area of space in which we can find these electrons, as described as a sphere for the s orbital, and as these triple dumbbell shapes, 
or if you if you like six balloons all jammed together into an X, Y, and Z orbital for the uh, P sublevel. And as you get up into sublevels, the uh, shapes become increasingly more complicated. The D sublevel has five orbitals, the F sublevel has seven orbitals, and the shapes of those are not quite as easy to draw as what we've just drawn here. That's all the questions I've got time for today, so please keep asking me your questions. I've had some incredible ones so far, and I'm having a lot of fun doing this. Please contact me at askrosengarten at gmail.com, and I'll get to your question as soon as I can. So, what are you waiting for? Ask Rosengarten!